And then the remaining criteria are uh, appropriate to higher order theories in one way or another. And we'll talk more about higher order theories later. Uh, we're going to look today at how um, specific criteria, behavioral criteria, exhibit uh, certain kinds of higher order abilities. Uh, so we'll look at three different kinds of higher order abilities, self-recognition, theory of mind, and uh, language as abilities that animals may or may not have that would indicate uh, a particular kind of theory of consciousness. So the first one that we'll look at is self-recognition. This is the ability to recognize oneself, and the test for this is mirror self-recognition. Here you see the chimpanzee is looking at itself in the mirror and, uh, and, and touching this dot on its forehead. The way in which this test is run is that an animal is uh, first acclimated to a mirror so that they have a sense of what a mirror is and how a mirror works. And then they're anesthetized and a dot is put on the forehead. And then the question is whether the animal will uh, recognize that the dot is on itself. So obviously this is a new thing and you get a dot on your forehead and you're going to be like, oh, look at this thing on myself. And so if you can recognize yourself in the mirror, according to this theory, then you are exhibiting consciousness. But there are two objections to the mirror self-recognition test for a test of animal consciousness. The first is that uh, a species may have no interest in mirrors or hands to wipe away the marks. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you just think that mirrors are boring and uh, you're not, you don't engage with them at all, then the mirror self-recognition test is not going to work for you. But that doesn't mean that you're conscious or not. It, 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 it's irrelevant. Or if you're a fish, it's very hard to wipe something on your head. Uh, fish researchers have figured out some clever ways to try to test for this anyway, uh, but it's a problem for the basic paradigm of the test uh, that you, you know, sort of take your hands and touch this space. Uh, another objection uh, for the mirror self-recognition test is that for some animals, staring is threatening. And so uh, you're not going to look at an image of a chimpanzee or another animal in the mirror uh, because it might be uh, somebody who's going to attack you and uh, might be interpreted by whatever uh, animal that is as uh, as a threat to, you know to me that I'm threatening them they're threatening me and so uh, you don't engage in eye contact of any kind um, so some of the animals that pass the mirror self-recognition test um, 18 month old children do I think not before that which is one of the things to think about for some of these higher order abilities infants often don't pass these tests uh, and arguably don't acquire a higher order capacity a sense of self-reflection until, you know, one or possibly three years old, uh, depending on uh, the kind of test and the kind of uh, level of higher order capacity. So higher order perception is somewhat uh, lower of a test than higher order thought, uh, as we'll see as we look at these different uh, tests and, and, and who passes it and when. Um, so chimps pass the test, bonobos, orangutans, dolphins, um, elephants, magpies, so birds will often pass these higher order capacity tests, which is one of those interesting uh, surprises in animal research. Um, ants apparently pass. I, curious about how that works and as I said fish researchers have figured out different ways to run these tests and so a cleaner wrasse fish uh, has passed the mirror self-recognition test. Some animals that don't pass um, gorillas, monkeys treat the, the image as a threat, um, sea lions are not interested at all, um, the giant panda doesn't pass for whatever reason, um, crows don't pass which is interesting um, as I said they're you know they can be pretty clever so if magpies do crows don't, um, cichlid fish also think of the mirror as a threat and the octopus has no hand so that's been an obstacle um, to uh, passing the mirror self-recognition test. So as I mentioned, this test, the mirror self-recognition test, is a test for the higher order perception theory of consciousness. Uh, and that theory defines consciousness as a mental state 
uh, when there is a higher order perception of that state. Uh, and the argument is uh, from, from Nicholas Humphreys, is the main proponent of the higher order perception theory in the last years, and he argues that what um, higher order perception does is that it allows us uh, to recognize our own states and recognize the states of others. And in fact, it starts out as a capacity to recognize another um, animal's states. So according to Humphrey's Just So story about how consciousness emerges, uh, he argues that when animals started to uh, group together and, uh, and have larger uh, groups that required some negotiation, social negotiation, uh, that some of the uh, members of that group, and here we have a picture of, of different uh, chimpanzees, some uh, clever chimpanzees learned to interpret the emotional states of other animals. So it's helpful to learn when uh, someone is really angry based on their behavior or really sad um, or threatening. And if you can recognize the um, emotional states of others based on their behavior, then eventually a really clever animal could figure out how to apply those same criteria to itself and so uh, come to recognize based on my behavior I'm you know stomping around like those other animals do and this means that I must be angry or um, you know I'm uh, staring at other animals so I must be threatening them uh, and 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 happy I can recognize my own happy behavior and so according to um, Humphreys the capacity to apply these behavioral criteria to oneself then allows one to identify the internal signals of that um, capacity of your um, state of emotion, your happiness or sadness or uh, fear or hunger. You apply those to yourself and that is what it is to be conscious, is to be able to apply those uh, to, to be able to see your, uh, to perceive your own mental states. The next test uh, for a higher order ability is the theory of mind test. And this is the ability to attribute mental states to oneself and others. So uh, similar to the um, a mirror self-recognition test, the question is, you know, what are the mental states? What, are, what mental states am I having? So that's why the higher order thought and the higher order perception theory both involve these higher order capacities to identify your own mental states. So for perception, it's a kind of perceiving of your states. For the higher order thought theory, it's a kind of a cognitive representation of your states. It's the thought about your states. And so in order to be able to identify your own states, in order to be able to have a representation of your own mental states, um, you need to have a capacity for a theory of mind. You need to be able to uh, recognize what a mental state is. Uh, and so for the theory of mind, the sight test is uh, argued to be a way to identify when an animal is recognizing that another animal uh, is is capable of um, of mental states of using its mind to interpret the world in some way or another, uh, and so um, in the picture here you see this elephant is uh, looking at these uh, trainers, and um, the test is to see whether the elephant can identify which trainer is looking at it, uh, because only the trainer that's looking at it is going to be able to respond to the elephant's request for food. And so if the elephant uh, directs its nozzle to the right person, to the person that's looking at it, then that means that the elephant has passed the sight test and that it recognizes which um, of the trainers is looking at it and therefore can see it and respond to its request for food. And you see the picture at the bottom and the elephant is actually passing in the picture on the left. 
um, because it's pointing at the woman who's looking at him. Um, but when they're lying down, the elephant fails and points at the woman who's looking away. Uh, and so this is one of the problems with using tests like this is trying to uh, get rid of extraneous factors. Is there some other reason that the elephant is pointing at one versus the other? Uh, you know, does it pass most of the time? Does it pass some of the time? You know, what, how are we going to assess this criterion for animal consciousness? Uh, is it capable of, of identifying the mental states or is it not capable of identifying the mental states of others? And for, um, for this theory, um, elephants pass 69% of the time. So we've got a picture of it passing and a picture of it failing, but apparently it passes 69%. Chimpanzees pass 67%. Uh, the bonobos and orangutans um, do pass. I don't have percentages for them. Monkeys fail the higher order, fail the sight test. Um, and studies with monkeys suggest that their social behaviors occur without regard for the ability to see whether the enemy uh, is there or uh, see a request for food. So they just do what they're going to do regardless of, of how it works. Uh, but I think there have been also some uh, sight test sorts of studies out in the wild with monkeys. Uh, I think with the capuchin monkeys, I think Lori Santos has done some some studies where um, instead of uh, a kind of lab or, or zoo test, they're out in the wild, which arguably is a better place to test for animal behavior because their behaviors aren't conditioned by their relationships with people. And so uh, they would have things like, like you know, putting food out uh, where um, where animals could get them and then, you know, kind of walking away a little bit or turning the other way and seeing when the monkeys would come and steal the food. Uh, and that seems like a pretty good, pretty good test that the capuchin monkeys um, do, in fact, pass the sight test. So, you know, so these are the various problems with animal research in trying to apply a test like uh, the sight test or, you um, uh, the uh, mirror self-recognition test in the wild um, or, or with animals at all um, to try to get it to pass or, or to assess that it can pass. And then the last uh, theory we'll look at um, is arguing that consciousness provides no advantage. This is an eliminativist theory of consciousness. Um, and so the question is, why have the illusion of consciousness and which animals would have the illusion of consciousness. And the test for this or the behavior that indicates uh, the, the, the capacity for an illusion for consciousness is the capacity for language. Language is defined here as arbitrary sounds or signs which are combined in a potentially infinite number of ways. And so this is a very particular definition of what it is to have a language. So this is more uh, sophisticated than simply animal communication. Lots of animals communicate in various ways, more sophisticated and less sophisticated. Uh, but language requires a kind of syntactic capacity, a capacity to rearrange the terms of, uh, of reference and, and to do different things uh, in, in relation to arbitrary symbols. Uh, and so on this definition of language, then um, only a few animals pass. We pass, obviously humans have language, uh, but infants don't pass until much later. So arguably they would not have the illusion of consciousness until they are three or four years old, or two or three years old, and they have uh, and they have acquired language, um, and 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 specific sorts of language would be required to have an illusion of consciousness. Uh, so you think about the way in which the multiple drafts theory would work, where we need to remember and report our experiences um, as uh, as consciousness, uh, and and it takes a while for uh, children to get to the point where they use language in that sort of a sophisticated way. Uh, so animals that may pass um, and that we just sort of don't know, they have uh, much more complex syntactic uh, systems, but we don't we haven't deciphered them yet. Dolphins seem to have a very complex system of, 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 of sounds, um, but it doesn't appear yet that it creates this sort of uh, syntactic structure for language. That I think may be the only animal um, 
Birdsong has been tested and it looks like uh, Birdsong does not have an appropriate syntactic structure. Uh, it, it has other sorts of communicative patterns, uh, but not in terms of communication and, and not in terms of this definition of combining uh, signs in a in a variety of sort of ways. Uh, so you know, as you're thinking about these different theories and thinking about animals uh, and whether animals are conscious or not conscious, uh, think about these criteria and these behavioral criteria and which ones you think actually uh, exhibit consciousness. Here is a list of a uh, summary of, of the different theories and what you would look for in terms of assessing animal consciousness. So if you are a global workspace theorist, then you're going to look for thalamocortical circuits to generate multimodal integration. Um, if you're a phenomenal self-model advocate, you're going to look for neural simulation of the world in relation to your body. These are particular physiological similarities that you will look for in relation to animals. Um, if you're a higher order perception theory, um, then you're going to look for self-recognition. If you're a higher order thought theorist, you'll look for theory of mind. Uh, and if you think a report is necessary for indicating uh, the illusion of consciousness, then you'll look for language. So do these uh, kinds of behaviors indicate consciousness? Do they not indicate consciousness? And how does that change how you assess this theory?